Now, just when you thought things couldn't get any more exciting, I've gone ahead and I've reopened up my Coca-Cola can file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this can a couple of times. I'm going to make a few duplicates of it. So I'm going to go to my 3D layers palette, find my soda can. If I open up the arrow here, you'll see the material options, and I'm pointing that out for a reason. I'm going to close this for a moment, and if I right-click on the soda layer, or the mesh I should say, I can duplicate it or I can make an instance. If I duplicate the object, it does exactly what you would think it would do. It duplicates the object. Now it does duplicate it on top of itself, so I do have to go out here and, and move it. Oop, that's rotating, that was funky. And I can go ahead and move it. Now if I go back to my 3D layers, you'll see I have two soda objects. Okay, not a big deal. Let's click on this one and delete it. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go ahead and do a instance. The difference between an instance and an exact duplicate, the instance looks a little different down here. It does not have the label uh, or the cap materials underneath it. When you duplicate the mesh, you make a copy of it and then you can edit both copies independent of one another. But if you do an instance, the instance links right back to the original mesh that you had. So if you were to go ahead and change the label on the Coca-Cola bottle, it would go ahead, or the can I should say, if you were to change the label on the Coca-Cola can, it would then change the label on all the other instances that you made. It just saves you a little bit of work further down the road if you're still playing around with textures and stuff on your mesh. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to position these guys in my scene. Let's move one over here. Let's get one kind of front and centered. And we're going to throw another one kind of out here into the background. And I think I'm going to rotate this. Let's get a little, oops, let me undo that move. Let's get it back there. I'm going to spin it so we can see the back of the label a little bit. Come on. Eh, something like that. Okay, great. Let's. Uh, Let's position this one over here a little more. And I'm going to right click and let's go ahead and make another instance of that. And let's move that around and let's put that on this side way back here. There we go. And let's give that a little spin as well. Oops. Mm, we'll go like this way just to mix it up a little bit. There we go. So now I've got three versions of my can. And when it renders out, you know, it'll render out all three versions nice and sharp, but check this out. I'm gonna go over to my 3D palette and I'm gonna click on my current view camera. You'll have this little camera icon right here. I'm gonna click on that. And one of the properties it has that's very cool is depth of field. Now the distance is your focal distance and the depth basically controls how blurry it's going to be. It's, it's essentially the f-stop setting. So I'm going to turn on the depth a little bit just to get things going. Let's put that up and you'll see my cans in the background get pretty blurry. As a matter of fact, the very foreground of the can in the foreground gets blurry and right about here it stays pretty sharp. You can uh, bring up the depth even higher. That will exaggerate the blur. That's probably a little too much. I think I'll keep it at about somewhere around two. Uh, maybe I'll put it on three. Maybe I'll just push it a little higher. If you play with the distance slider, that basically rolls your focal point. So if I put the distance higher, it actually starts to put focus on the can in the background and the foreground can gets blurry. Now the blur is incredibly nasty looking. It's a very low resolution, blocky sort of proxy of the blur. But when you render it out, it's going to take a little longer to render, but the blurs usually come out pretty sweet. So I'm going to go ahead and just put focus on the foreground can. That looks about right. And uh, that's kind of all there is to it. You play with the distance and you play with the depth and then you just kind of be prepared for some long render times. So I'm going to render this out and uh, see how it looks. And once again, through the magic of editing, here's our final piece. Not too shabby. That took about 15 minutes to render. Uh, I'm going to do one more version of this just for giggles. I'm going to go ahead and change my focal point. I'm going to bring up my distance. Uh, so that can in the background is in focus. 
And I think for giggles, I'm going to bring the depth up a little higher. And let me take this soda can. Let's bring that in the foreground. And let's take this can and let's bring this one a little more toward the foreground. And let's try to recompose our shot. Maybe I'll do a little bit of a uh, Dutch tilt here. Whoops. Let's get off the can. Did I make that can a little crooked? I think I did. I think I was not paying attention. Okay. Let's do a little bit of a tilt and maybe recompose our shot a little bit. And let's see, a little bit of an orbit here. All right, and let me grab this can. I'm gonna spin it a little bit this way, and we'll take this one, might as well see the name here. Let's spin that like yay. And, oops, tilt our view a little more. All right, let's give this a, a quick render. This will probably take another 15 minutes and see what we get. We'll be right back. Okay, and once again, we have a final render, just like the last one. This one took about 15 minutes. Um, now that I look at it, I'm not a big fan of the composition of the shot from this angle with the shadow going off to this side. It's uh, The can almost looks like it's floating. It doesn't really look like it's sitting on anything, but nonetheless... The depth of field thing is working pretty great. Okay, I'm going to do one more depth of field test on this. I'm going to go and get rid of my instances. I'm going to take the original can. I'm going to put it over here. And let's go to my camera again and bring the distance back to the can so the can's in focus. And now what I'm going to do is get kind of a... Oh, get my wrong rotate tool here. Let's get sort of like this look up at the can. This sort of monumental type shot here. Let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. Maybe nudge it over a tad. Another thing you can play around with in the camera is the field of view, which is basically the, the zoom ratio. If you bring it down the camera will take on more of a wider lens. So the field of view was on 49 if I bring it down to say 25 and now push my camera in, you can see you get a much more extreme tapering on the can. Let's go ahead and let's rotate that a little bit more. There we go, something like that. So you can actually control the lens angle as well if it's a wide or normal or telephoto lens. It's kind of wild. Let's take my focal distance now and let's put it let's put it on the uh, cola right up there at the top. And let's maybe twist this a little bit more uh, this way. Let's bring play at that distance a little bit more something like that and let's bring the depth up a little higher and let's give this a quick render and see what we get okay once again we got our final product here and you can see it does have a very shallow depth of field it's fairly sharp up here at the top and on the logo here and then it definitely gets softer as it comes down here so um, you can definitely have fun playing around with the camera's angle of view uh, to exaggerate the perspective on the object Okay, I've got one more demo for you. I have a stock photo of a kitchen countertop. I'm gonna turn on uh, my Coca-Cola can again. And let's activate the 3D layer. And let's see if we can composite this can on the kitchen countertop. So first off, I'm gonna start with the perspective. So let's use this grid as a guide to get this on the countertop. So I'm gonna Spin, whoops, let's spin my view around. Whoa, I got the wrong, I keep grabbing the wrong rotation tool. I want the orbit tool. I'm going to rotate this and align the grid. See if I can match the red line here to the uh, angle of the countertop. Let's see if that helps out a little bit. Okay, that doesn't look too shabby. Do I have to rotate it a tad? Whoops, other direction. Mm, yeah, maybe something like that. And now let's click on my model. It's clearly way too big. So let's scale it down to what we think the right proportion will be. And that all depends on sort of how close to the camera it's going to be or how far away. So I think I'm just going to put it, you know, right about here to start. Let's scale it down a little more. 
Let me pull it forward, something like that. Now I'm going to go up to my mesh options here, and I'm going to click on the coordinates. I'm going to go move to ground. There it is. Now it's actually sitting on the ground plane. I can see a little bit of a shadow coming off the side here. So let's get this pushed back, and we'll push it back over here a little bit. And right over here, again, I can see some shadowing taking place. Let's try putting it right there. That looks pretty decent to start with, huh? Maybe rotate it a little bit. Oops, that's moving it. Let's try rotating. Come on, get on there. There we go. Okay. Well, I think that'll work for now. I might go back and tweak it later, but I think it's a pretty good start. All right, next up, I'm going to go ahead and look at my lights. I have an infinite light on here, and I think I'm going to look at my lighting in the scene. It looks like a lot of the lights are coming from above, from under the counter, the sort of under counter type lighting. You can see in the imagery, everything has these kind of harsh shadows just below it. So I'm going to take this light and put it almost directly above. I'm just going kind to of push a little to the side, maybe something, something like that. that. Then I'm going to take the color of the light, and right now it's white. I'm going to go ahead and sample some of the color that's out here. Maybe some of this blue off the wall. That way the, the light takes on a little bit of blue tint, which seems to be uh, the light as it bounces off you know, the tile and the wall here. Everything's got a little bit of a cool look to it. So I'm going to sample like a bright portion off this wall maybe over here, and that might actually be just a little too much, so I'm just going to back off just a little, little bit, so it has a little bit of a tint to it. Okay, well, again, you know, I'm going to go at that for now, and I might end up changing it uh, in the final render, but we'll see what happens. So I've got this, I got right now I've got one infinite light on the object here, so I'm going to go ahead and add in a second infinite light. And I want to put this again above, but a little more on the face, just a tad bit more on the face of the object. And I'm also going to take the color of that light, tint that blue, maybe just a, a little less of the blue, maybe a little less than what I had earlier. Okay, that way the whitest part of my object isn't rendering out totally white. It's actually going to have a hint of blue, a little bit of color contamination on it. All right. That's a good start. Now I've got some shadows I gotta look at. I've got my two shadows coming off my lights right here, and ideally they have to be fairly dark and they need to be, you know, really directly under the object. So I'm just gonna keep finagling these two lights just a little bit more, a little playing around. Okay, and I think what I'm going to do is go to these two lights, and I'm gonna bring up the softness to maybe. 60% on both these lights. Let's do 60. Okay. Now, while looking at the scene, I also notice that the countertop is reflective. Well, I can do that in my 3D environment as well. If I go to my 3D palette, click on the word environment, check this out. This is something we haven't seen before. You have some ground plane options. You can actually control the intensity of the shadows and reflections. So right now the opacity of reflections is all the way down. If I bring it all the way up you'll see a reflection come into play. So it's reflecting the bottle in the ground plane. Now that reflection is a little too intense. I'm going to bring that down quite a bit. I'm just going to do the reflection at about, let's see, maybe about 15 or so. Just a little bit. You know, actually it's at 18, close enough. And then I have the opacity of the shadows. I can go ahead and I can darken those up a little more. Bring that up to 100%. And that'll get me some darker shadows. And, um, you know, I'm going to give this a render and see what we end up with. Okay, so I've paused the rendering, and here's what I got so far. It's still a little noisy looking because the render didn't finish, but I do have a pretty harsh shadow here. That might be a little too harsh. I might back off it just a little bit, maybe blur it just a little bit more. Uh, another thing I'm noticing are these specular highlights on these containers. I'd like to get some of that specular glare on the side of the soda can as well. So I'm gonna go back to my model, 
under my ground plane for environment let's bring the opacity down just a little bit maybe to about you know, 85% or so we'll see how that looks then I'm gonna go back to my label material here we go I want to bring up the reflection on that a little bit more and then I'm gonna go back to my environment and spin my globe around here and let's see if we can uh, get something happening with those reflections oh here we go oh that's that's exactly what I'm looking for in the background here there's this glare uh, hitting on the uh, containers I want to do the same thing right here you can also make out some highlights on these uh, sort of purple uh, bowls back here whatever they are uh, so I want to match that up a little bit too so I'm just gonna put that about right there and we're gonna give it a render okay I got a little further along in my render and again it's not looking too bad I got this glare right where I want it but now I'm noticing the reflections I totally forgot my reflection here is just a little too perfect I want to go ahead and add some roughness to it so that also gets a little soft so I'm gonna go back to my 3d layer I uh, go under my environment under reflections and I meant to bring the roughness up a little bit earlier so let's go ahead and now let's try about 15 or 20 percent or so that will just fuzz it up a little bit and let's start the render again what I like is right out of the gate just a few moments once you start rendering even though the image looks kinda grainy you can get a pretty good sense of what the final piece is going to look like it's just a matter of it dithering out all that noise and making it look really clean but you can get a pretty good sense of the shadows and the specular highlights and the reflections right out of the gate so you don't have to spend you know 15 minutes waiting for a completed render you can really after about a minute uh, if not sooner really gauge how how things are coming and once again here is our final render and I don't think it looks too bad it's got uh, a little bit of shadowing underneath it does have its highlight it has a slight tint of blue to it and it's got the reflection going on here I don't think it's too bad you know I, I think if um, somebody really stared at it for a while they would figure something's a little funny with that can but I think for a quick mock-up again if you're working on a design for somebody and you want to wrap it onto a virtual object and then stick it into a scene man I think it works out just fine my reflection does go all the way down the ground plane so you do see it you can you almost can't even tell it's the reflection but it is bleeding around the edge here you can go to your 3d layer and you can add a layer mask and you can go ahead and paint out where that reflection ble bleeds off the edge of the table Oop, I went a little too far there let's try this again there we go so you can clean that up that's usually something that that needs to be done uh, when you composite but it's a pretty easy thing to uh, take care of okay well this pretty much wraps up and it really is an introduction to the 3d environment in Photoshop it's very powerful you know I've given you a little taste of everything but you can go in much deeper with all aspects of it in terms of you know the models and the lighting and, and just you know the compositing but this should get you off and running and give you enough knowledge to play around